readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Hello and welcome to the Brothers Gwyn. Today, myself, Ed, and my brother Will from the Brothers Gwyn have been doing a little bit of a video about stand Just a little that bit. we absolutely <laughs> love. And this will be a top 10 video, which we're really excited to do. Uh, I think we'll have standalones probably from all sorts of genres, genres, books from all walks of it's life, true. Uh, if you are. Um, all words of life, really. All different genres. Um, yeah, exactly. So that'll be fun uh, to cover as many different books as we can. It was really hard, actually, to kind of it? trim it down to just 10 sad lines. At yeah. first, I hadn't thought I'd actually read that many. But then when we got to the list making, I'd read quite a few. It's been a while since we actually made a video. We, we went away for a little while, didn't we? We, we went did. to a music festival and we've just kind of... Ease our way back Just in. about found that we're alive again. <laughs> just so, about. Um, just so about. we're here, we're back, we're bigger. Uh, and we had a few videos in the Big backlog one. we'd edited that we had come out, but yeah, we're back. We're back for good. But I go. will kick us off with Steph. Is that right, Will? Yeah, you don't usually go first, do you? I don't, but uh, let's mix it up a bit, you know. Let's new go beginnings. Let's new... go wild. Let's do it. <laughs> let's go new year, crazy. Uh, Piranesi by Susanna Clarke is my number 10 pick. <laughs> my 10th favourite standalone of all time. It will probably change in five minutes, but that is the spot it's in at the moment. And Piranesi by Susanna Clarke is a very strange read. It is classified as fantasy. Um, it is basically, uh, we have, our main character is in a very strange house which uh, has many corridors that stretch for miles of classical statues. It's very strange. Uh, and there's one other person that lives in this place. Um, but you learn that it is attached to the, the real world as we know it. Uh, but I won't say much more. Part of the experience of this is going in blind and then have li having the plot unravel before your eyes. And it's so engaging uh, and pretty uh, pretty ominous as sounds, well. It sounds like a Neil Gaiman book. It, it? It, it Very Neil Gaiman-esque, I would say. Uh, and so, yeah, for so anyone who loves Neil weird, Gaiman, I, <laughs> very weird, but somehow it feels great at the Does same everyone time. wear only black? <laughs> yeah. You think of the Sandman now, Ed. I, I, I think everyone. I think every Neil Gaiman book can only wear black. Well, the Graveyard book, I'd agree with that as well. But yes, that never is my wear. Neverwhere. Oh yeah, this is uh, my number ten pick though. Although the Angel Islington in Neverwhere doesn't wear black. Yeah, he wears. But anyway, yes, number ten. Number ten for me is a historical fiction uh, set in the Viking ages, and uh, this is Wolf of Wessex by the awesome Matthew Harfey. This book is basically True Grit if John Wayne had a sword. That's what I say. Or Logan uh, if Logan didn't have three claws, he had one sword. You're very good at ones like sword. one line. I said that three claws, <laughs> one sword. Um, so sorry about that, everyone. Uh, but yeah, so Wolf of Wessex is awesome. It's, uh, it's basically an old grizzled veteran warrior, um, a Saxon slash. Uh, with some kind of Danish vibes going on, isn't there? I'd say um, that. Uh, and he's protecting a young girl. Uh, and, and that's all you need to know, really. It's, you know, there's full of amazing set pieces. There's great writing, great character work, some awesome animal companions and, uh, and some really brutal action. So, you know, if you want a, kind of a very snappy historical fiction, then Matthew Harfey, Wolf of Wessex is the place to go. Very nice. And our next up, I don't have a physical copy on me. We recently moved and I borrowed Papa Gwyn's copy when I read it. So it's in stories. Is it the moment. same book? Because I actually don't have my book either. Is it? Number nine. Is it Legend? legend. Yes, David very nice. Gemmel. Yes, yeah. Legend. Uh, Druss. If, you've not, if you're a fan of fantasy, I imagine you've heard of Druss. Uh, he is pretty awesome. He's become quite an iconic figure. But if you're not as much into fantasy or you haven't heard of Drust, basically he is the main character in this standalone called Legend. And the premise of this book is that Drust is a veteran. He's an older man now. He's uh, he's fought in some pretty epic battles, but mm -hmm. um, there he's basically Kratos. Really. But the uh, the tribes of a kind of a more desert land, a bit like the Mongols, basically, have all united and they're coming to assault the. Uh, Another country which Dross is from. Yeah. Um, so the there's Drenite. a fortress called Dross Del Dross Del It's essentially and... one huge book of Helm's Deep. It's a big siege. Exactly, Dross is then in charge of uh, defending against the siege. And it's like, imagine 300 yeah. uh, were actually, you know, against the million Persians were actually in a fortress. And, you know, uh, and the book is David Gemmell's kind of way of, of writing about heroes, about people who uh, are thrust upon situations what they can't get away from. Yeah, and sometimes they can get away from it, but they choose not to. Mm -hmm. uh, no one, in my opinion, writes because this is my ninth book, so I'll do a little bit of talking as well if you don't mind, Will. But um, we chose right, um, the same book. There you go. We should be 
related, really. Um, but yeah, so this is kind of David Gemmell's way of writing heroes, and no one quite does it in the same way as he. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic writing. Druss is amazing. The other characters, the other POVs are so much fun as well. Uh, and it is a very poignant book. There are uh, moments of... Uh, of extreme sadness and sorrow and David Gemmell writes those moments just to perfection. It is a character book through and through uh, and it, it is a standalone. There are books written about Druss after David Gemmell wrote Legend so um, so maybe uh, you could say it's not really a standalone. Oh, but, but it was written it as a standalone as and it's if I, I and think it's the it, only one about Druss I've read. I think if so. you could say to someone jump straight in here and read this. Yeah then I think it's a standalone because you don't need to read the others. Um, they're like prequels. It's a yeah, bit... Um, I need to change my list. <laughs> yeah, it's significant. But anyway, yes, it's the ninth pick for me as well. Legend is awesome. It's a great standalone. It's got the epic factor. It's got flawed characters who you're rooting for. And yeah, it's got everything really. And uh, David Gibbons one of my favourite authors. So Same there him. we go. So uh, is it onto my number eight pick now, Ed? Because you just talked about number nine. Carl, you'll get Close, this in. And I can see we're about to pick up and it's an awesome cover. What have I got next? I've got another one I've not got on hand for me, sadly, ashamedly, really, and it's Let the Right One In. This oh, is a yeah. fantastic book, which is horror, but it's basically fantasy, horror, literary fiction, everything. I think it's Crombie, if, in if what... Joe Abercrombie wrote literary fiction. That well, how dark it is. Uh, not as funny as Joe Crombie because everything is sad in this book, basically. Yeah. But this is a story where, where <laughs> vampires do feature, and they're pretty uh, strong part of this book. But to me, it seems like it's showing that humans are the real monsters, basically. Even yeah. though we do have some vampires killing people, so that says a lot about the people in this book. Uh, it could be considered quite cynical, uh, but basically, our main character is a boy, uh, and he is bullied. And he has a very hard life uh, and he meets a girl who's just moved uh, in and he only sees her at night time. Not sure why that would be. Why. Um, <laughs> uh, but basically it is a story about how he is coping with the world around him. Um, and yes, I won't say much more than that. A, a bit like Piranesi, a lot of this is about the story taking you in directions that you do not expect. It is multiple, There are some dark multiple, corners of Let the Right Wing. Yes, it's a this is not, V book. It is yeah. not for the faint of heart. Mm. It is not for young children. Uh, but it is something that I actually think is very important reading as well because it's very powerful. The themes are just utilised so well and I'd say Let the Right One In is like a masterpiece. It's one of those that... A book that you I loved reading, but I also was thinking this needs to be studied. This yeah. is like, it's really impactful and it's one that I think is very important. I agree. The next one for me <laughs> Thanks, is Ed. True Grit by Charles Portis. Now, uh, if you know me, then you know that I love a good Western and I think True Grit is among the best of Westerns. Really, I think it's probably my favourite Western that's kind of, it doesn't take itself too seriously. Um, that I think there's a humour uh, in Western books that is, I don't see it in any other genres. Uh, it's such a dry, kind of quick-witted humour as well. And it's like you see it with authors like Larry McMurtry and um, uh, the guy who wrote Sisters Brothers as well. Then uh, I can't remember what his name is now. but Oh, Patrick DeWitt. There you go. Um, That's it. There's, there's this humour and this subtlety that is it, it is so well written. And I, I, I don't know if it's just those three books that just really stand out to mind. But um, yeah, True Grit is such a good book to jump into as well. Um, if you've seen the films, then this is, you know, the films are so faithful um, to the book. And oh, I would, okay. I would, I would, the writing is beautiful. Charles Porter's done such a great job uh, with creating these amazing characters. And, you know, it, it, they're always very non-linear. They might sound linear, you know, a girl goes on a quest to kind of avenge her father. Um, but, you know, the way they unfold really isn't linear whatsoever. And, and they're, they're just bags of fun. The character's amazing. The wit is just hilarious. Um, and, again, moments that, that we, with great poignancy, there's, a, um, you know, really emotional stabs and gut punches that land absolutely with success. Um, so if you're going to ever read a Western, you know, Lonesome Dove is the one for the big epic, the Odyssey. Um, if you want to, you know, really get into those characters and you've got a lot of time. But if you just want to quickly dive into a book, you could read this. I read this in about 12 hours. Um, so, yeah, not 12 hours of full on reading because that would be a, a, quite an intense zone I was in. But, you know, you could read it in a day. I'll That's probably there we go. I'll shut up now. But yeah, I need to read that as well. And it's a beautiful cover. Yeah, you do, mate. Maybe I'll, I'll say that's the, the next films. one. You need to... What's your favourite film? Do you prefer the John Wayne one or the, uh, the... What's the guy you don't understand a word he says? Jeff. Jeff, not Buckley. No, he's a singer. Um, Jeff. 
Oh, no, Matt Damon's in it. I would say the modern one because of the main actress in the modern one, I think, is absolutely brilliant. Yeah, she's, she's fantastic. Great. Has she got on to do anything else? Yeah. How about um, oh, that Hawkeye programme? So you're about to be really cocky then and Hayley, say... Uh, her name's about... Haley. I think she did um, that Hawkeye programme. Oh, okay, all right then. But anyway, we're talking about books today. And next up, I have something Ed's already talked about. And so my seventh pick is The Wolf of Wessex by Matthew Harfey. I do one up. I, yeah, I do one up for you. That. I bought you the paper as a present, though, to be fair. So... I, I think we're even there. Uh, but yes, so, so this is... could have bought me the a, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> this is a standalone. It's mystery meets historical fiction. Uh, and it is set in the Dark Ages Britain. Um, and yes, there. I say I really love this because there's a fantastic mix of that mystery with some real character depth and also some very amusing moments as well. And... There's a dog. So, yeah, Matthew Harfey claimed my heart with this book with the dog uh, called Odin because he's got one eye. Uh, even though the may, the may character is not a, uh, a, a Norseman. Um, and so, yeah, that does actually cause some conflict in this book. People thinking that he must be of the old ways because he has a dog called Odin. But, yeah, so there's some very scenes arise because of that. And, uh, yeah, Matthew Harfey's a great writer. I've read quite a few installments of his Benicia Chronicles now and Wolf of Wessex. This is probably my favourite by him. And yeah, Dunstan's a fantastic character and I love how uh, he begins in quite a secluded, isolated lifestyle uh, where he's withdrawn from society because of his past. Uh, but because of what happens a bit of that, like in Logan, the one with Hugh Jackman, um, where he's brought into the fold once again because of events that drag him in that he just, he just can't stay out of. But yeah, so that is Wolf of Wessex. Ed said some nice things about it as well so uh if you do trust our opinion at all uh please do give this a try it's only a short one and it is a standalone so yeah that's the great thing with these standalones you can just jump in if you don't like it then yeah, you've not... you don't have to read the rest do you? yeah exactly <laughs> because you're done with it but yeah i'm pretty sure that you enjoy this one for everyone uh, the next one for me is we're going to the fantasy genre now, which is Sword nice. of Kaigen by, by uh, M.L. Wong. Uh, and Sword of Kaigen was a book I put off reading for quite a while because it had kind of these modern uh, elements to it, like video games and stuff like that. But when I actually took um, the plunge, took the shot of Dutch Courage and dived into this, uh, the plunge, that's a good one, Will, um, then I actually found out that it's a wonderful, gripping and riveting read. Uh, Sword of Kaigen follows two characters um, one is the mother and one is the son and it uh, follows them on an island uh, in kind of, you know, basically basically Japan um, and they're kind of learning to be samurai, the, the child is anyway, the, the mother obviously has a hidden past um, and then there's an character. invasion that's going on, yeah, uh, and uh, it's amazing. Emma Wang has kind of made a book which is paced absolutely perfectly. There is a kind of chapter called The Duel um, which is about five, six the way through. And I think if it ended there, it'd be an even better book. It probably would be higher up on this list. But um, but still, there are moments here that made me cry. There are moments that, here that made me laugh uh, and jump for joy. There are moments, you know, this book will have you feeling everything. And it will hit you in the feels as well. It had you um, invested. Yeah, utterly and completely. Because the characters here that ML1 creates are, are superb. They're flawed. They're extremely flawed. They go through some awful stuff. They put people through some awful stuff, but they, you know, they are people through and through. Uh, and it is so rare to find a book like this that you you could just immediately connect to. I think it's one that everyone who reads fantasy, historical fiction, who just reads should give a go because um, I think there's a lot here to connect to. And the characters, again, are just portrayed beautifully. Um, and I can't wait to see what Emma Wong does next. Very nice. So it's another one of those that is on the endless... TBR, TBR mountainous pile. mountainous pile yes but next up I think this is number six yes it is number six so I shouldn't have doubted myself should I but anyway it is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman this is my favorite book by Neil Gaiman and I absolutely adore Neverwhere so this is as he said earlier Neil Gaiman writes some very strange books where he has random ideas but they just click they work with the reader and they're not jarring at all at least not to me anyway um yes but uh Neverwhere so set in London and you've got a bit of a, a mirroring world, a bit like Harry Potter where there's the land, the muggles living and then there's the, the hidden kind of uh, segments of the, the wizarding world. And Neverwhere is a bit like that where you have um, London Below is where all these random creatures and magical people live. Um, and I absolutely love this book. It's so quirky. There's a great plot line. There's a lot of character growth of our leading characters and also the two main Two of the main villains throughout. There is another one. Uh, but the two main ones that we know about, Mr. Croup and Mr. Vanderbar. I think one is a wolf and one is a 
Fox. I might yeah. be wrong. Yeah. I think so. Um, and they are absolutely incredible. What a pair they are together. So funny, very but very... dynamic duo. They right? are, but they're also pretty terrifying, aren't oh, they? Yeah. They've got this like unpre unpredictability about them, which they bring that humour along to the book, but you are actually kind of scared as well when you're in their it's chapters. It's like humour that you feel like you shouldn't be laughing at. Yes, exactly, exactly. And like Neil blocked her humour. Neil Game is great at that as well, yeah. isn't he? And yeah, Neverwhere, is, I flew through it in about a day, I think. I adored it so much. And yeah, it's one everyone should read. Neil Gaiman is just one of the maestros, isn't mm -hmm. he? 100%. One of the maestros. Uh, the next one for me, number, number six, six, I believe, is The Sun by Philip Meyer. This is a really special book for me um, because it kind of sent me on this crazy journey that I've been on since I read it about, um, oh, I don't know, two years ago or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah, it was nearly that It was long. two years ago, probably just probably over, a year and a half. Just over two oh, years, was it actually, actually. two years? Yeah, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, so The Sun by Philip Meyer is a book that follows through... I mean, I, I say this is what, like one of the best American novels because it really covers uh, a broad span of a period of America. Um, so it follows three POVs and they are in three different generations of the same family. So the first um, POV is Eli McCullough and he is born around, uh, I think, the 1830s, 1840s, um, when Texas, on the day that Texas was made independent. Um, and then the next POV, which is interweaved, uh, is his son um, at the end of the 19th century. And then it is Eli's granddaughter, the third POV, in f going from like the 1930s onwards. So it follows his family through all different eras of America. You've got Eli McCullough is captured by a band of Comanche and he is then indoctrinated into their band and he becomes one of them. And then he joins the Texas Rangers and he has a, like a, this insane life. And then the second POV is about his son. It's a bit of a romance between this Mexican family and you still have Eli in the second POV, um, but he's a bit of a tyrant, to be honest. Um, and then in the third POV, it's the granddaughter see it going through how America has really changed, you know, the, the industrialization of America. So you have three great concurring well. Exactly. Timelines. So it'd be Eli, Peter, uh, I can't remember what the um, last character's name is. That's really bad of me. But yeah, um, the, you know, I read Blood Meridian really, and then I decided to go to The Sun because everyone said this is kind of the next book to read after that. And it made me completely fall in love with... Um, Native American cultures, you know, the, obviously you can't just say Native American cultures, there are so many different cultures out there, but it m made me feel this fascination and this kind of excitement about reading about these cultures that I've never learned about before, um, that you've only seen portrayed as, you know, the bad guys on, um, you know, in like Westerns and that kind of stuff and, you know, films from the 50s. And there's just a whole new world out there, which, you you know, is so important to read about. It's made me read books like um, Bury My Heart at Wounded Knee. And, you know, saw some people commenting on our videos recently, having a little chat about that. And that's, you know, that's a huge thing for me. So, you know, this book sent me on a journey. It's probably why it's so special to me. But it's also an amazing book because, you know, there are these three different POVs. They cover so many different things and it is written beautifully. Philip Meyer is one of the few writers who I can see challenging Cormac McCarthy in terms of, of prose, you know, He's up there with Robin Hobb and Anna Smith Spark um, for certain. And it is kind of, a, you know, there it's like a, what's the word? Hallucinatory, hallucinatory yeah. um, book that just hallucinatory. Hallucinatory. It takes you in all these different avenues. And it is amazing. And it really does cover a lot. The characters are incredibly flawed. And, it, you know, this is a very grim, dark novel because history usually is. But um, you can't get yeah, more grim. It's history. one that I really highly recommend. Yeah, it's one of those that I think you're going to recommend. We sometimes we, make Ed, we do a trade where uh, I will read one of his favourites and he will read one of my favourites. Yeah. I think that'll be yours that you pick for me soon. Mm -hmm. But anyway, now on to my final pick of today. Uh, and that is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. So there is a sequel called Bloody Rose. But I've not read it oh, yet. Bloody hell, Will. And, you could have chosen a book. But I do believe there are none of the main characters in this are in the sequel. I may be wrong. Have you read it? No. <laughs> but that's what I've heard people say, unless I've just like created this. Other just, people who haven't read it. Unless I've just created this illusion <laughs> no, so that I can have this in my yeah. list. But yes. You know what? We make so the rules, mate. We do it's make the rules. Video, so you know what? No day. doubt. Kings of the Wild is my number fifth favourite standalone of all time. So when I read this, I thought it was going to be a really fun read uh, because of everything I'd heard about <laughs> Kings of the Wild. 
but I ended up being thrust into a world of such vivid nature with characters that are so compelling and there's so much depth in this where you get really emotional. The premise is that these characters were part of the famed mercenary band called Saga. But that was many years ago and they've split up, they've all gone their different ways uh, and they're pretty old now. It's like uh, Led Zeppelin but... if they were in The Witcher. <laughs> yeah, okay, <laughs> that is good, that is good. Um, and one of the members, yes. their daughter, um, uh, gets into some danger. So he gets the old band together to try and help him. Uh, and the some boys of them... are back in town. So Yeah, the boys are back in town. Some... I think that, is that on the phone? I think it says it, yeah. Yeah, the boys are back in town right there. Uh, and some of them don't get on with each other as much now. There's been a lot of years since they've last seen each other. Some enmity, some to put aside, old friendships. And it's really emotional in that way. Uh, it's very philosophical in like how things change as you get older, what you value, what's important to you. And yes, it's just fantastic. And I'd really recommend this to anyone. And it does offer a very satisfying conclusion. So even though there is a sequel, um, you can read it just on, on its own and stop there. A bit like you come with uh, Last Sort of Giles Christian, but I decided that yeah. is part of a series. That um, is part of a series. The next so book I'm going to mention is actually part of a trilogy. But I will but leave this here. Yeah. That so, is my last of the video, by the way. So this, this is the last the one final book for me. This is a book that is book one of a trilogy, but when it was written, it was a self-published book and it was written as a standalone, I believe. And it has this open-ended mm. nature to it that I, I read it as a standalone. I'm probably not going to read the next two um, because... Did you realise there were others when you read it? No. So you just thought that was out? I don't think they were out. They weren't out when I read this. Oh. Um, so yeah, this is Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. And this book is, honestly, I think... I don't see enough people talking about it's it. It's so good. I know it was so popular when it came out, but I think mm. since the other two of the trilogy came out, it hasn't had that popularity, which I think it really deserves. And I think that's why I'm going to carry on just sticking with it as a standalone. And I would encourage people to read this as a standalone. If you love it, then go read the other two as well. Um, you've read the other two, haven't you? Uh, um, one more. What, the, the next one. But um, Blood Song is a book about someone called Valen Al Sorna. And you follow this character who he's awesome. it begins a little bit like Name of the Wind kind of way where he's you know telling his story, isn't he? Yeah, it's um, a chronicle's he's, tale. He's a prisoner and it is a chronicle's tale. And this is the best character goes to school I've ever read. Um, that's this whole segment in this book where the character goes to school to train. Oh, so um, good, isn't it? It's phenomenal. And basically, this is a character study where you follow this main character um, and he, you are swept along the journey of his life, basically. And it is phenomenal. It's breathtaking. There are, you know, it is, it's almost like Empire the Vampire, really, in, in scale, isn't it? Of the yeah. characters of you know the style as well really you know going to school and you've got these different timelines as well but um you know the friendships that you make here as along with the character is phenomenal uh and it is breathtaking it's a it's a very just huge sprawling novel um covering this person's life but it's also so intimate as well there are you know some amazing gut punching moments there are betrayals and heartbreak and and uh yeah it's a phenomenal book. I, I don't want to say too much else about the plot, really. Um, it's one that I really need to reread as well. I think I'm, I hope I'll be rereading this soon. Yeah, actually, that'd be a good idea. It is just a wonderful book. Anthony Ryan is a fantastic writer. I definitely need to read much more from him. But Blood Song is a book that, you know, I've only read it once, but it sticks out to memory straight away and it will stand. Head you and always talk about it. So many other books because they're basically, this is full of those iconic moments, like Jay Crystal's writing as well these iconic scenes that are amongst the best of fantasy. Uh, and I think, you know, if you like books like The Rage of Dragons, that kind of thing, I think you will love Blood Song for sure. Very nice, Ed. And that is the end of our video today. Part mm. two will be coming in a few days, hopefully. We we need to record it straight after, don't we? Yeah. Uh, but yes. Was it? Yes, thank but, you yeah. so thank much you, for Ed. watching our video about our best standalones. Now, can you have a guess uh, what one of our uh, what our favourite standalone is going to be in the next video? Please let us know and in, let us in know the yours. comments below what your favourite standalones are. Are there any that we're missing? And um, what kind of genres do you read where there are standalones? I think there's lots more standalones in literary. I was going to say I noticed making this list that there's not as many fantasy ones, even it's though not. we've both made made yeah. read. Uh, fancy the majority of our yeah. reads are yeah. um, uh, not many are standalones, but let us know. What other, yeah, what any other, other ones? But just don't mention Tagana in the comments, please. Ed doesn't like Tagana. Just don't mention Tagana. It didn't click with you. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I just know someone's going to mention <laughs> Tagana. <laughs> well, they're definitely going to know. You've highlighted it. Oh, but thank you so much for watching. Truth and courage.
The brothers go in. Truth and courage from the brothers go in. Stay, stay safe. Everyone. Stay safe.